All right, so I made a video the other day where I said I probably would never host my application on a VPS. And a lot of people kind of reached out and said, hey, you know, the reason why we want to use a VPS is because it's cheaper than hosting on these services that I kind of mentioned in a, a previous video about how I would build my SaaS product using a majority or a lot of these services out of the box. Okay, so that led me down a path of, you know, if I was forced to use a VPS, right, a VM, how exactly would I go about Posting my little personal side project, maybe for like a small client, how would I do it? First of all, I'll say that uh, for the most part, I would probably try to use serverless wherever possible. There's a framework called SST that allows you to deploy Next.js applications, Remix applications, all behind a serverless Lambda endpoint, which means that your services are going to be very cheap. And what do I mean by cheap? Well, I have this icon generator AI site. It makes about, you know, $1,000 every month, and I have to pay about $2.50 to have it hosted. And most of that cost is for using S3. The actual Lambda's running the backend code. I still believe I'm on the free tier of costs because I'm, it, they just give you so many free credits for Lambda. So right off the bat, if you want to try to save as much money as you can, I would say try to host your APIs and all of your application using AWS serverless slash Lambda. But if I was told that I need to use a VPS, um, I'd probably go and use DigitalOcean because I do like DigitalOcean a lot, but there's a lot of other VPS hosts out there that might actually be cheaper. And I want to show you how I would kind of get a production ready setup on a single VPS machine. I went ahead and went with the two CPUs, four gigabytes, $24 a month um, setup. But I think you can get away with the smaller machines if you don't really have a lot of stuff running on your machine. So I got the VM set up and what I would do to have basically my application deployed there is I would probably use Docker Compose, okay? I love using Docker. It makes things a lot easier. Stuff is repeatable. If something were to go wrong, I could quickly spin up my entire application on another VM without having to do a much manual configuration. The Docker Compose file I'm gonna show you right here is actually gonna be a little bit more involved and I have a lot of extra stuff that I'll talk about in here. But overall, you really just need your Express server, okay? And then you also want Caddy if you're gonna want like HTTPS set up out of the box. So I also have a bunch of other services here that I'd probably install on the machine or at least have a separate machine, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. That's for tracking my production logs. Um, I'll kind of walk you through that later. I have C Advisor, which is kind of monitoring the usage of your containers on the machine. And of course I have Postgres um, for a database since you will probably need a database if you're building out a real application. Okay, so let's kind of see how this works, right? I have a SSH terminal opened up to this machine. You can see here I have my Git repo clone. The easiest deployment process when you're working with a VPS is probably to SSH into it, do a Git pull to get the latest code changes, and then rerun your Docker Compose, right? You can automate this with some type of script if you want to, but let's just go ahead and do a Docker Compose up hyphen D. Now I will say I also made a setup script. If I go to the readme, now I will say I have a system CTL script, which is basically gonna run Docker Compose in this directory. Um, so if I just run this, this should start up my Docker Compose, and it should spin up all of my services, and then we should be able to see all my services come online. So if I do a Docker PS, you'll see now I have a bunch of services running. I have Caddy, I have my Express Service, Kibana, I have uh, Logstash, Postgres, Elasticsearch. I can also do a Docker Stats if I wanted to kind of monitor the usage of these. So as these are spinning up, um, let me show you the actual API. So this is the Express API that I'm hitting. I have this with HTTPS, and that's because of Caddy. I have a domain that's pointed to this IP using an A record. And every time I hit this endpoint, it's actually going to generate a log, and it's going to send that to Elasticsearch. And I'll, and I'll show you how the logs work in just a bit. But we have this over here. We have C Advisor, which is a great way to kind of look at your containers. I don't know who built this UI, but it's just completely awful. Um, but I guess it gets the job done. You can go into individual containers, and you can actually see, like, your memory usage of your containers and stuff like that. Overall, when it comes to running things on VMs, typically you wanna like keep your memory um, below maybe 70%. Like you don't want your memory to get too high because then you risk your machines just starting to kill your services and that's not good, right? So using C Advisor, or if you can find a better one, I'm sure there's uh, better ones out there. You can actually go and see what is the memory usage. What is the memory on the machine? Scroll down to the bottom, and this is the memory usage right now, I believe. So it's about 3,000, about 3.4 gigabytes out of a four gigabyte machine. Now, the reason I'm using so much memory is because I have like Elasticsearch running and I have some other stuff running. But anyway, C Advisor, I definitely recommend at least having on the machine. I don't think it takes too much CPU or memory to run. But then also, let me show you my Elasticsearch setup. 
So this one's important. Elasticsearch is a way to basically take all your logs that are happening in your API and give you a better way to search over them. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in. It's gonna ask me to create an index. I'll go ahead and say check for new data, create an index pattern. I'm gonna say log stash star and I'll create that index pattern. Make sure I click on timestamp here. And what this is doing is basically parsing over all your logs and it gives you a great way to go to your dashboard here. And every time someone hits your system, like if I were to refresh this a couple times, okay, and then I go and hit refresh, you'll notice that every single request to my API is actually logged out here. And we can actually dive down even deeper into what was logged out and I can filter on various things. So when you get to a larger type of system, Sometimes you want to find all of your endpoints that, you know, through errors during a certain time range. Um, so if we were to try to find like a status code, let's just go ahead and see if we can do this. I think like slash hello might actually throw an error. I think I also have one called bye. All right, let's go ahead and refresh that. And let's go to the very last log that came in. All right, so this hello endpoint actually threw a 500 status code. But let's go to find where that status is. So down here, I'm gonna go ahead and filter all four status codes of 500. And what this is gonna allow you to do is in this little timeline, you can see every time a request were to throw some type of error, right? So if I were to go ahead and like zoom in or zoom out, you'll see all the requests that had a status code 500. Now, this is very important. I don't think a lot of people who say that they're running stuff on a VPS like actually have proper logging set up. And getting this set up requires quite a lot of memory on the machine, which is why I kind of recommend like just using an existing log service and in your code, you can actually just use some type of transport to send the logs to these existing services. In this case, I'm using the Elk stack here, which is free. But if you want to use one of these other services, you have that option as well. Okay, so if I go here, I have a Winston logger set up, right? But this Winston logger, if you're using like Express, you can actually change the transport and you can change this to ship directly to Elasticsearch if you want to. But in my case, I'm using something called Logstash and I'm also using a Docker Compose setup that basically forwards all the logs from my Express service to Logstash. And then Logstash is gonna forward those and parse those and send them to Elasticsearch. So it's a little bit involved, but the point of this video is basically just to like let you know what I would do if I was told that I have to run a system on a VPS, okay? This is the thing I would probably do. I would use Docker Compose. I would SSH into the machine when I need to deploy changes, or I'd write a script that does it for me, and then I'd probably just rerun docker compose hyphen D up to basically have it refresh and reload all my services. Now, if you want to get real fancy, you could, instead of having it build your new image on the container, you could have this point to an image. So like my server, and then I could say like version two or something. So that would actually grab your Docker image for whatever service that you're building. And that'll pull it in and just kind of run that instead of the previous server that you're running. So in this example, instead of using Elasticsearch, you could potentially use something called Grafana. I haven't used it before. There's also something called Loki, where you can inspect your log, similar to like I did with Logstash, but I don't know how it ranks up to Elk. I think the Elk stack has been around for much longer, so this might have more features and might be um, more robust. I don't really know. But overall, my, my main points are, if you're gonna run on a VPS, you still need to have a way to track your production logs. You still need a way to monitor the machine to make sure your memory is not about to run out and then your entire service goes offline. And then you still need a way to easily update and deploy changes. And that would do that using probably a, uh, an image. Uh, and you could host that image on like Docker Hub or AWS ECR if you wanted to. And your VPS will pull that image and rebuild and launch that. So. That's about it. And technically, you don't have to use Elasticsearch and all this other stuff. You could just do like a grep on your logs if you want to, if you want to go old school like that. But honestly, I wouldn't consider that a really great approach to like monitoring your logs on your system. Yeah, leave a comment. If you guys have a different idea how you would host a service on a VPS, leave a comment. Let us know. Another approach is you could do like PM2 and have your service just like restart when it crashes. But I think Docker is a much better way to like wrap everything so that you don't have to worry about all that underlying um, dependencies that your service might need. Anyway, that's it. I'm gonna wrap this video up. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and happy coding.